Half marathon races are some of my favourite races to commentate. Let's be real guys, some of them are so crazy that they attract the fastest Africans from around the world. Well in today's race we're going to be covering the Prague half marathon which was an event put on and displayed with some of the fastest runners in the world. Two of the favourites in this race were Galen Rupp and Tamarat Tola of Ethiopia with a handful of Kenyans who had all broken one hour and two minutes. At the beginning you can see Galen Rupp going straight to the front of this race showing that he means business. However, as we fast forward three minutes into this race, Galen Rupp is no longer in the lead but instead he is now slotting himself perfectly in the middle of this group. Now during the time of this half marathon race, I believe Galen Rupp was undergoing Achilles treatment for an injury and if I remember rightly this was either after his injury or it was before it fully kind of came about. You can see Galen Rupp there towards the back of this pack and uh, they started off very very fast however they slowed down considerably around 5 to 10k. Now in this race we also needed to keep our eyes on Tamarat Tola of Ethiopia. Tamarat Tola is a very experienced road runner. He's been around for a long, long time and he has been very, very good at pushing the boundaries in the half and full marathon distance. If you're new to my channel, hey, this is The Runner. I cover all of the races around the world and I also give you the latest running news. So if you want to watch the London Marathon this April and you want to watch the Paris Olympics this July, make sure you subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with all of them. Here we are 10 minutes into the race. There is still a big group of around about 20 athletes there, maybe around 15. I think I miscounted. I added too many. Here they are coming over the beautiful long stretching bridge. The water not so beautiful, reminds me of the water in London, uh, the river that flows through London, but we won't talk about that because the city of Prague is absolutely stunning. The architecture, the tram lines, it's a beautiful place to go and an even better place to race a half marathon. Highly recommend this event to any of you runners out here who want a holiday to Prague is the Prague Half Marathon. I think it is put on by the company Run Check. If I can find the source, I will leave a link to it so you guys can uh, maybe enter their next race. Their latest one is coming up next weekend, so the entries are probably shut, but there's definitely time to apply for next year in 2025. 13 minutes into the race, Galen Rupp is still there. You can see him there. He's one of the tallest of this group, and uh, I believe Galen is around about 5 foot 10 to 5 foot 11. So uh, you can uh, really see how he is... Uh, around about one of the tallest in this group he's looking very strong though he's doing a very intelligent thing here as they go through the first 5k he isn't doing the work but neither is tamarat tola and these were the these were really the both favorite athletes in this pack so at first i couldn't really understand why no one was taking this race out because right now it seemed to me that they were both just looking for a bit of a lazy win I think that's what I've come up with, a new term called lazy win. It's when an athlete just tries to win as slow as they possibly can. Do you know if you're bidding for something like a house at auction or say something worth a lot of money, you don't want to bid tons more, do you? You want to bid the least you have to in order to win it. So it makes sense that some of these athletes like Galen or, you know, people like Tola would try and run as slow as possible but still win. Well, we're 18 minutes in and Galen Rupp actually started to look like he was struggling. Look back there, I mean, they've done this silly split screen thing, which I don't agree with, but uh, here we go. See if we can get a view of Galen Rupp. He has been dropped by the group and he is actually struggling. Now, they're not operating crazy fast. I believe they are running at a pace of around about 59 minutes and 50 seconds. They are coming up to the 10k mark very soon and they not they they aren't really going that fast when i watched this race live the commentators were saying that they were predicted to run just under the hour and with the likes of tola and galen rupp we were trying to look for a low 59 minutes if not a sub 59 clocking but i don't know if that was possible 
21 minutes into this race and I was trying to keep my eye out for Galen Rupp. However, it looked to me like he was no longer in this lead pack. Instead, it seemed like he had dropped back and was seriously struggling just to keep up with them. Tamaratola of Ethiopia, however, was still in this race and it was really anyone's game. So Galen Rupp isn't that far back. You can just about see him in the right end of this camera angle. He's around about 10 meters off of the lead pack and he is leading the chase pack. So there we go. That's a good view of the lead pack there. Tamarat is at the back of this lead pack. The lead pack has slowed down quite a lot. We're looking at around about a 10k and over 28 minutes now. Tamarat Tola is getting a bit hesitant. He's confused why these guys are slowing down so much. Notice that there's a lot of bunching. There's a lot of issues now with cramped kind of there's no space and a lot of these guys are looking around thinking okay we're running fairly fast you know we're running one hour one hour one minute pace but it's just not fast enough and eventually after the 10k mark well they haven't even gone past it yet but Tamarat was looking at his GPS watch and he was like hang on why haven't we gone past 10k yet it's 2740 this is too slow guys come on we need to make a move so having said that Tamarat Tola realized this and he was like, okay, well, now it's my turn to make my move. Galen Rupp can't even handle this pace, so he's finished. But I got the rest of these Kenyans to try and drop, which isn't exactly going to be easy. So 28 minutes, we're now approaching and this was an aggressive move as they come back over the bridge. This was the same bridge, I believe, that they had passed the last time. Or it is the other one on the opposite side of the river, which comes along the opposite side, reaching back into the city. I've always said here on this channel that Tamarat Tola is a very aggressive runner. He's the type of runner that doesn't tend to run slow at the beginning of the races. But in this race, he made a different move. Obviously, they'd slow down a lot here. They went through 10k in 2832 which isn't even sub one hour pace. And if you're Tamarat Tola and you're not running sub one hour pace for a half marathon, you're gonna get pretty angry. Like it was pretty obvious that this guy was so eager to break one hour. He basically turned around to everyone, all the Kenyans, Galen Rupp and said, bye bye, see you later. I mean, look at this. He's dropping paces of around about 2.30 per mile and the chase pack really stand no chance. They decided to start running their own race and Tamarat just dropped everyone by uh, around about 100 meters in the space of a minute to half a minute so this was really aggressive running if you see the gap here we're only a few minutes past that kind of a shot that we just looked at and he has acquired a gap of blimey 150 200 meters very very aggressive running here as we approach 34 minutes into this race god only knows how on earth Tamarat Tola conserved that kind of energy for a kick that aggressive. So Galen Rupp, I can't see any signs of him. He is still running the race. No, he hasn't dropped out. So stick around to see how fast he runs. Here is the chase back of around about five athletes, six athletes, pardon me. And they are not really bothered about Tamarat anymore. I think Tamarat is getting further and further away from them with every step. So right now, it's become a race of Tamarat Tola versus the clock. So Tamarat's obviously looking to get back under that one hour predicted mark. But the question is, will he? Because I think that the first half of this race ruined his chances of getting a big personal record. But there's a chance that he might actually break his personal record as Tamarat Tola doesn't have the fastest of half marathon records. He would strike me as a guy that's gone sub 59, but uh, unfortunately at the time of this race, I don't think he had run that and he hasn't run that to this day as far as I'm aware. Please correct me down below if I am wrong. So here we go. Coming up this section here is a fairly hilly kind of section. Tamarat Tola, good form, looking strong. He really is doing a great job. He was born in 1991. So he's not particularly old, but he's also not very young. And I think that he's a great athlete when it comes to experience. He's uh, won Dubai Marathon in 2017. He's run a lot of the marathons, the big city majors. He's uh, won New York City Marathon. 
He has also been a good cross-country runner representing Ethiopia for many, many years. He has a very distinct running form that I could spot out from any of the big names. However, sometimes I really look at him and I think, he really sh just looks like he struggles to run at these paces. Does anyone else think that? When you look at Tamarat Tola, his arms are a bit funny. They look a bit awkward to me. I don't know if that's just my personal analysis of his biomechanics and his running form. But look at that group. There's still six in the chase group. We are 43 minutes into this race and he is really just pulled away from them. I think at this point in the race, he had a 40 second gap on them. So distance wise, that's over 200 meters. <laughs> um that's crazy he really just is a class above the rest of these athletes and uh really really good uh turnover there even turnover you know tamarat tola for a while was criticized because he has a almost like a heel strike with his uh, foot plan but i wouldn't necessarily call it heel strike i think it's more of a midfoot it just seems like that because he extends his uh lower knee quite a lot and uh, if you want to see a proper heel strike I think some athletes that do do that are Shura Katata. Uh, he's tried to change his form over the years, but when Shura had his breakthrough at London, uh, I think it was 2017 or 20, yeah, it was 2017 when Mo Farah was in the race. Uh, he um, had an awful heel strike, really bad when he was running in the uh, Nike Zoom Flies and um, the next percents. He was a really bad heel striker. But the thing is, guys, some of these uh, athletes can heel strike. And it goes against those theories that oh, all the Africans run barefoot and they all run on the forefoot and a light on their toes, etc, etc. Some of these guys don't necessarily run like that. They actually have rather messy forms of that of some of the elite Western runners, especially from the 1980s. So not always do we have this, uh, all the Africans have the forefoot striking form, because sometimes if you're going to land on your forefoot, you might not be getting the most out of your stride because to get nice long strides you have to plant midfoot at least if not slightly onto the heel so here we go here both of these runners have quite aggressive arm swings coming out from their mid torso notice their arms are flailing slightly obviously at this point they're five to six minutes from the finish so their bodies are flooded with lactic acid they're, uh, they're in hypoxia uh, they are extremely uh, struggling to really compose their form here. But one of these athletes has really made a, vo a move. Look at this. He's getting away from the rest of that chase pack. And the chase pack has now turned into two when it was originally only six. Yeah. So here comes Tamarat Tola. He's going around the corner. He has just over one kilometer left to run. The chase pack are now one minute behind him. And uh, they're not much of a chase back anymore because the chase back has been broken up really well by the second place athlete. Okay, here we go, guys. Here is the finishing stretch. We've got Tamarat Tola coming in, attempting to try and break that one hour mark. Is he actually going to do it? We got the moped riders doing a great job, uh, really cheering him on and also giving him direction because the last thing they want is him to run the wrong direction that would be the worst <laughs> that would be the worst thing to happen right now in this race so look at that fantastic race 59 minutes and 37 seconds unofficially that is a fantastic run by tamarat tola and here come second and third so that's around a whole minute slower as i've cut the footage one hour 38 i'd say one hour 37 unofficial so yeah good running from second and third to break away from the rest of that chase group now let's see where galen rupp actually is in this race so we're now at one hour and one minute roughly this is one minute and 20 seconds behind tamarat tola so whereabouts is galen rupp at this point i thought he had dropped out because this is very slow for galen rupp um even the likes of galen would have probably dropped out by now in uh, a situation where he had fallen off the pace this hard but uh, he seemed to be uh, continuing to hold in and uh, keep getting to that finish treating it as a training run trying his best to you know really pull through that pain so here are some of the other runners coming through we've got top 10 now finished i believe uh, mostly ethiopians fantastic racing 
by the Ethiopians. And uh, here we go. We're at 1 hour, 1 minute and 45 seconds. Still no signs of Galen Rupp. So I am thinking that the Tamarat Tollers and the Ethiopian champions of this generation are going to struggle. Oh, here's Galen Rupp. One hour, two minutes, unofficially. So, not great. Uh, yeah, he doesn't look happy with that. He really just... Uh, I don't know what happened there. He went out with intent. At the beginning of this race, Galen went out right at the front. So, maybe he just had a bad race. Maybe he really hadn't uh, trained properly for it. He could have gone into the race overtrained as well. But the paces weren't that fast. You know, they went through the first 10k in 28.33, I believe. That's not fast. That's not even sub one hour pace. So for a lot of these runners who always do positive splits, okay? And if you don't know what positive split means, it's basically where you go out too fast and then have to slow down. That's how most people run races, even the elites. However, if you are a fun runner or a hobby jogger, then your best off is to run negative splits, which is run faster towards the second half of the race but when you're running at a world-class elite level it works out best to just go out hard and try and hold on but you know i didn't understand why galen was uh, really struggling so much in this race there's got to be a reason for it over the last few years he's really struggled uh, he's had a lot of kids he's had a big commitment for his family life and uh, his commitment to his religion and his faith uh, which i massively respect and also he has gone under many operations uh, for his Achilles. So I believe he had Achilles tendonitis. He had a uh, torn Achilles. Uh, I think he's had a lot of issues with those Achilles. And um, people say it stems from his forefoot running style being too aggressive on his calf and Achilles. Well, I don't know. He spent years at the Oregon Project, which obviously, you know, got into a lot of trouble after what was found out. However... They put a lot of emphasis on form, biomechanics, hydraulics, underwater treadmills, etc. So I don't think his form is to blame for his Achilles. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd be welcoming your opinions about the race or anything I've said in today's video down below in the comment section. If you're new here, subscribe to stay up to date with all of the races and I'll catch you in tomorrow's video.